Hello and welcome to the Finally Quit Porn Podcast. Today I'm joined by my mentor and coach, Mary Paulus. Welcome on the show again, Mary. We've done quite a lot of episodes together recently. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Tom. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing all right, thanks. Not too bad, not too bad. So today I've got a few questions for you. And I'm thinking we can kind of just go through these questions and explore them both in a bit of detail. Uh, These questions are from the community that I actually host on Discord. So if anyone wants to join it, I'll put a link in the description as well. So the first question is, is quitting porn sustainable over the long term? We often discuss the short term, but is it really possible over the long term as this is where most obstacles lay? Well, that's uh, the question of the day, isn't it? So yeah, well, it depends on your method that you use for quitting porn, which I know you have a lot of experience with because so many of the methods are just with the distraction there you can do it for a while right you can distract yourself for a while and the more intense you get about your distraction then you can sustain it maybe even longer but it's kind of no way to live and it doesn't really change your neural pathways in a way that it's actually going to alleviate the desire to use porn so yes it is possible to get the the permanent mental freedom from it but depends very much on the method that you choose to try to attain that so so yeah. going into those distractions a little bit more obviously you know that i used to literally distract myself quite a lot a few months yeah. ago i would honestly put my phone in my locker at work leave it there and then go home because i thought well if i have my phone in a locker there's no way i can access looking at sexual content so i'll be fine yeah. so yeah left my phone in the locker at work and went home and I just distract myself until the urge went away. Other ways that I would distract myself would be things like meditating, going to the gym, journaling, seeing friends, staying busy, working on my purpose, working on my goals, and just kind of doing whatever I could to get away from the potential of feeling the urges. Do you want to share with our audience like why that specifically is a bad idea and why that's just not a long-term solution? Well, I would say, because like I was just saying, it doesn't change the neural pathways to be, because because you're wired now from compulsive desire, okay? Yeah, there it is. You want to use the porn, right? And then you feel a certain way until you act on it. And then when you do that, you're you're reinforcing those pathways all the time. But if you're trying to do distraction, okay, or avoidance, you know, put the phone in the locker or whatever, you know, you're you might be creating pathways, but they're not not the ones that you need to be changing. They're creating, oh, I got a new pathway where I know how to sit and meditate for an hour. Or I'm going to go make this new pathway over here. But it's all in an attempt to avoid the desire. And if you're avoiding the desire, you're not going to get connected to the pathway of compulsive desire, which, and then you can't change it. You're just creating these other ones that are about something totally different. Go ahead. Creating new pathways, that's not going to change the old pathways. Like, can it not replace them in some way? I would say no. It's not, you know, it's, well, you're going to have new ones that are going to be, so you're going to be really good at meditating and you journaling and and you're going to reinforce pathways for those practices. And then you probably are going to get better at meditating and you're going to get better at journaling and you're going to get better at, you know, working out whatever it is you're doing. But until you directly get tapped in to that pathway of compulsive desire, that's not going to just change miraculously. It it's not, and it's and it's it's a challenge to get connected to that pathway because you know we've talked about it in the past. It's like you want to kind of avoid that desire when it happens, get away from it, you know, because like there's shame around it, whatever. And you also think, well, if I have this desire. Then I'm going to go into the, get into the porn, you know? But the thing is, is that you need to get tapped into that desire and be able to make a choice, you know, in the moment to change that pathway. Cause it's like I say, you can try to push it away, but you know how difficult that is. It's uncomfortable and it comes back, you know, right? Isn't that your experience that it comes back eventually? Yeah, it always comes back. I've done streaks where I've done three months, four months, maybe five months without any porn, no masturbation. And then I'd eventually go and look at that content because I hadn't actually tapped into the neural pathway to change my brain for good. So 
as you were saying there, a little bit about shame. Like, do you think some people want to avoid the urges and tapping into those neural pathways because the shame is too intense in a way? And can that be a problem for some people? I think that shame, feelings of shame contribute to it. I don't think they're the absolute driving force, you know, because you can go and learn, you know, go to therapy and deal with all your feelings of shame and, you know, get in touch with your feelings, experience your feelings, all that stuff. But that still doesn't disconnect the pathway of compulsive desire. I mean, the thing is, is, you know, people aren't always in a bad place when they have a desire to engage, you know, in a compulsive behavior. Sometimes they're feeling great. You know, there's not, there's happy feelings around it, not just things like shame. So I think shame contributes to it, but I don't, I don't feel like there's any reason for people to be ashamed of being stuck in a compulsive or addictive behavior because we're all susceptible and our society now promotes it pretty much, you know, just all the you be you do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. And, you know, still got to pay the consequences. Yeah, definitely. Like for me, what happened is I actually let go of a lot of the shame because I worked through it and did a lot of the sort of meditation and things that do help. And just talking about it is what, like talking about the shame as well helps because through doing a YouTube channel, podcast, just talking with friends, family, whoever, I kind of got to a point where I didn't really care too much about this problem. And then still felt some shame now and then, but overall I'd worked through the shame. And so that didn't cause the trigger that led to the urge too much. But then even when I worked through all of that, the urges came back, but they were like a different right. taste, a different flavor of yeah. urge. They're, weird, they're right? still there. They're still there. Like I say, until you until you deal with them directly. And the thing is, is all this other kind of self-improvement work is awesome, but deal with the addiction directly and then see see how you feel. And then you can deal with improving your life and other levels, you know, and with other, other practices and methodologies. But some of the things that we're applying to addiction are just, you know, barking up the wrong tree. So, yeah. Yeah. And then the next question is kind of in a similar vein in a way, but it was around, can you look at porn in moderation? And I guess your answer might be around deal with the addiction for this, tap into the neural pathways, rewire your brain, and then make a choice on how much you want to look at porn, but don't try and look at it in moderation whilst on the journey. What would you say? Well, you know, that that is a tricky one. I would say as long as you're in a frame of mind that is not one of helplessness, that if I look at porn, I'm going to get completely out of control. It's more if I if I come across porn, I like in the, the podcast you made recently, like accidentally or whatever, then you may have desires and want to get out of control, but then you have a way to deal with that. And I mean, I feel like it's going to be an individual choice. And maybe if you get far past the compulsion and really feel free of it, that you may not even have a desire to look at porn. You won't be wanting to negotiate with it. You know, um, I, I don't know. I just it's it's hard for me to say because I don't look at porn, you know, but um, I I don't really feel like it has a useful place for people, you know, I mean, and also since you know that you are susceptible to be being very compulsive and addictive with porn, so maybe you're going to make that choice to not look at it at all, but yeah. not because you're afraid of it. Oh my God, if I look at it, I'm going to be out of control. No, because you know what? It's kind of like alcohol, same thing. You know, if I drink, if I have one drink, I'm going to be totally out of control. Well, maybe you decide I'm not going to drink at all because I know I'm susceptible and my life is good without alcohol. Same thing with porn. You know, it's like maybe you don't, you just not, don't look at it because you don't want to anymore. And why put yourself in that frame of mind? I mean, there's, there's not really a point to it, you know? Yeah. I would say that if someone is thinking that way, they're already in the future. 
which is one of the ploys of the addictive part of the mind. It's like, oh, well, maybe I'll be able to look at porn in the future a little bit here and there. Well, if you're thinking that, you're you're having a desire right now. So deal with that desire right now and, you know, think it through, create the new neural pathways and or change the neural pathway. And then you might, that that thought about, oh, well, maybe I could look at it a little bit in the future might be just gone and you don't, you don't even care, you know? So I mean, yeah, once you experience the benefits of not having to be a porn addict, th- you're not going to want to give those up just to be like, oh, maybe I could look at it a little bit, you know? You're just not going to think like that anymore, in my opinion. Would you say that question, can you look at porn in moderation? Do you think that's part of like the addicted mind trying to take over to get somebody to look maybe in the future to get them out of the present moment? To like, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. some addictive junky thinking going on there. Yeah. Which will be, be dealt with if anyone who wants to do the class, you know, we deal with that very specifically. And yeah, thinking into the future is not a useful thing at all. Not only is it not useful, but it's also detrimental because then it's like, now we're going to think about, oh, can I look at porn in the future in moderation? You know, not the issue. You know, when you're getting, when you're breaking free of a compulsive behavior, all that future stuff is not going to serve you. So, but we deal with it real specifically in the class. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. And what's your opinion on streaks? So a lot of people in the no fat community as such, they do these streaks where they try and abstain from masturbation in particular for certain lengths of time. And that usually includes abstaining from porn as well. What's your opinion on trying to aim for like 90 days or a certain amount of days of abstinence? A setup for failure. Flat out. This is this is like the diet industry. I'm going to eat, you know, I'm going to eat, you know, just a, on this crazy diet for the next 30 days or I'm going to go to the gym for the next 30 days and work out. It's all the same kind of thing. And it, it intermittently reinforces for starters, you know, because it's like, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to not do it, not do it, not do it, not do it. Now I'm going to do it. Let myself, now I'm going to reward myself for not doing it by doing it. And then you intermittently reinforce it, which makes it worse because now you just taught the addictive part of your mind. Just hang on. I'm going to give in eventually, you know, and it's not about that. That's so not in the moment. I mean, talk about future thinking. I'm not going to masturbate or I'm not going to use porn for, you know, 90 days or whatever. It's like, okay, well. It's, it's just so in the future. It's not going to change anything. You're going to hang on. You're going to do all, you know, psychotic distractions to try not to think about it. And then, then you, then you're going to be faced with the desire real strong when you, when you've decided, oh, I made the 90 days. So now what, you know, what happens after the 90 days? (laughs) It's a streak, right? I guess. I mean, I don't really know what a streak is. I'm assuming that means stay off for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't think a streak would work and you think that's setting up people for failure? For sure. For sure. Yeah. It's again, it's like trying not to think about it and, and just like not dealing in the moment where you're actually going to make a permanent change. And the permanent change always happens in the present moment because that's when you actually rewired the neural pathways and you can't do that in any moment other than like the present really, can you? 100%. Yeah. I mean, you can have an intention of what you're going to do in three months, but the only real change you can make is when you're in that moment, I want to do it. And the thing is, is if you're planning to stop doing it for a certain amount of time, again, you're thinking about it right now. So use your script, deal with it, you know? And then once you, once you have those permanent changes, all that other kind of thinking is going to go by the wayside because it's, it's not helpful and it's and your your mind is just gonna understand that that's not it's not it's not helping you you know so so as an alternative to no five streaks would you say a better approach a better approach is to actually just learn how to rewire your brain how to actually have this choice of either i strengthen my neural pathways or i weaken my neural pathways and then you just are free from that point on for the rest of your life once you've actually done our course for example and like learn yeah. how to rewire your brain through your scripts yeah. and through neuroplasticity and actual neural pathway rewiring yeah you actually then have a choice for the rest of your life rather than this being like a temporary yeah. thing of i'm going to quit for 90 days and then i'm going to go back to it that doesn't work it, it just doesn't from my experience 
Well, it depends. You know, if you want to chase your tail, you know, if you want to just keep running in circles, chasing your tail, or like I say, you know, running in the hamster wheel, if that's working for you, great. Keep doing it. You know, you're going to find a million things online that are going to say, oh, just do this, just do that. There's a million experts that's, I mean, that people that claim to be experts, I really don't know what the hell they're talking about, but they're going to prescribe this and this and this, and it's all usually, you know, some kind of distraction or avoidance or whatever, or, but yeah, if you want to, it depends if you want to really just get free of this thing, you know, or you want to keep chasing your tail, It's, you know, that's my opinion, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I can say, like, obviously, from having training from yourself, that, this has been the only time in my life where I feel like I actually have a choice in the matter of whether I look at porn or I don't. And yeah. due to the rational reasons not to look at porn, every day I just make the choice not to look at it because I know that weakens the addictive part of my mind, strengthens yeah. the better part of my mind. And yeah. it sets me onto this path of freedom, which is so much more enjoyable. And the other thing I've found is I barely ever even think about this anymore because in the past, I'd always be thinking of like, how do I distract myself? What do I need right. to do to make sure that I don't have a relapse? But now, once I'm free, it's just like, right, I'm just going to work on my goals. I'm going to see friends. I'm going to see family. If I want to lay down and go on my phone, I'll lay down and go on my phone. I used to have all these conditions and rules for myself yeah. to ensure right. I didn't have a relapse. But now it's like I'm actually free for the first time. So it's so yeah. much better to take this approach of, right, you get into the neural pathways, you rewire your brain, you deal with urges. Yeah. And then you're yeah. free for good, rather yeah. than doing it this backwards way of like, I'm going to try and do everything I can to yeah. ensure I don't have an urge to like yeah. temporarily quit. It, it's such a backwards yeah. way of doing it, but that's what yeah. everyone seems to be talking about, right? And then the urge comes back. And then what are you going to do? Why not just deal with the urges to begin with, you know? Save yourself a lot of time and energy so that you can do all these other things in your life and actually enjoy them rather than just using them as a way to try to not think about porn, you know? It's like, yeah, it's trying not to think about it is futile. And when you have the right tool to think about it correctly and make the changes, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's kind of weird because I've been at a point recently where I've just started to think this is pretty simple, really. Like, there's not too much to think about because you either in that present moment you deal with the urge or you don't deal with the urge if you have junky thinking come up like some kind of irrational thought trying to trick you into looking at sexual content you go and you make your choice so i either strengthen my addictive mind or i weaken it and and other than that like outside of that there's really just not too much to this i mean is there anything else outside of the present moment choosing to either deal with the, that urge and then also like, identifying the junkie thinking. Like outside of that, like what else is there to kind of deal with this problem of compulsive behavior? There, there. Well, I would say one thing is when you do feel the freedom, is to make sure that you are grateful to yourself, or you know, for the work that you've done, and just be sure to acknowledge and not take for granted the freedom that you feel. You know what I mean? That's kind of the work down the road is to be like, oh, yeah, I don't have to deal with this anymore. I don't have to be thinking every day, how am I going to avoid these desires to use porn? Or how am I going to quit porn? And oh, my God, all of that. So, like, just that maintenance of enjoying the freedom by saying, oh, you know what? I did this work and I have a tool. If it ever becomes an issue, if there's any kind of persistent junkie thinking or desire, I have a tool that I know is going to handle it and I can remain free of it. And so maybe just kind of that gratitude that you've, that you've done this for yourself, you know? So, I mean, cause people really don't understand how powerful it is to use the script and then actually be free because there's so much out there that basically teaches people that if you're an addict, you're an addict for life you know it's like you're going to be dealing with this forever you're always going to have to go to a meeting or do this or do that you know they just they don't believe it so when you do experience it it's like be grateful you know you were you did the work you're willing to do the work and yeah good for you thank god you know i mean there's nothing worse than being in a compulsive behavior 
and wishing you could stop and trying to control it or trying not to think about it. That's just like living in hell, really. I mean, you've experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's tough. It's tough. It's no fun. And yeah. that was one of the hardest parts is definitely just constantly, constantly thinking about it. It's just frustrating. It's exhausting. Yeah. I kind of compare it to like a tug of war. Like you have one side of you that's pulling in one direction, which is like, I want freedom from this addiction. I want to get rid yeah. of this problem. And you have the other side, which is like, no, I really want to look at this. I want to escape all this sort of anxiety or stress or loneliness, tiredness, whatever it is. Yeah. It's just like this constant battle. Like, it's so exhausting. And I just, yeah. it's just so much better to just be free from that so you can just concentrate your energy elsewhere. I'd say one other thing, though, to be careful with that came to mind when you were talking about being grateful that you've like learned this skill is yeah. more so not replace this one addiction with like a different addiction because... yeah. I've kind of had to be careful on this journey of not falling into that trap, I'd say. Obviously, I use like yep. the scripts and do the I know. But yep. at the same time, I think the way my brain works, I do get quite compulsive about all kinds of things. And sometimes yep. it might be work or it might be fitness. It might be something that's kind of actually good for me, but it can yep. still be a little bit compulsive in a way. And, and I want to make sure that I don't fall into that trap as well. Well, you know that you have your script to be able to use on anything that you know is something that the addictive part of the mind is trying to get you to substitute or get you to not think about an actual desire for porn, you know. And then because you you use this script for something that has been acute compulsive behavior, now you are you've strengthened pathways that you can apply to anything else because there are so many behaviors that you need to engage in, like screen time. I mean, we can't live without screens, you know, anymore. I mean, everything is we have to deal with our banking. Everything's got to be on a screen, you know. Food you have to eat, right? Because that one can become very compulsive and is absolutely a nightmare for people when they get stuck with food compulsion. Um, but just strengthening the knowing that you know when it's the addictive mind and you have the script and you can use it, then you can become or or maintain a reasonable relationship with checking out you know yeah heck we want to go and veg out on our phone sometimes we want to just go watch some tv or whatever we want to go you know run do whatever you know there's things we we want to check out of life i mean we're human we don't want to just be like all oh, like whatever all the time you know so that having the script and having broken free of a really you know intense compulsive behavior you already kind of have that skill so you can apply that skill and watch the addictive part of the mind trying to get you into, oh, is this compulsive or is this not? Should I, I had a donut or, you know, whatever, you know, am I be, am I going and working out too much? Am I meditating too much? Am I this? And that's where it tries to get you into this questioning, which you mentioned on your last, on your last YouTuber podcast that I just re yeah. uh, listened to recently. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a ploy by the addictive part of the mind to get you into that state of helplessness because now it becomes about, oh, is this a compulsion? Is this is this becoming compulsive? Is this a substitute? Am I oh, am I really trying to avoid whatever? Rather than I know, you use my script, you know, and then so you, you you that becomes second nature. You'll be thinking your script on autopilot, and it's gonna it's gonna pull you out of that questioning, and then you can have a reasonable relationship with other things that are nice to be able to check out and relax, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think one reason why meditation can actually help people, like I totally appreciate it doesn't tap, tap into those neural pathways. But yeah. one thing that I've experienced as somebody who has had a real bad compuls compulsive behavior, you know, looking at a lot of sexual content in the past when I didn't want to, one thing I would say is that meditation helps create some space in the mind so that you don't overthink things so much. Because I think overthinking is one of the main things that the addicted part of the mind will use it will try and get you oh, yeah. and out into these crazy situations like have i had a relapse have i done this have i done that do i need yeah. to and it's like it's actually not that deep like it's not that yeah. it's not that complicated no. like you either act on it or you don't there's not much it, more to it, it and it's by design if you think about like when you start to question yourself uh, oh am i being compulsive about this or that write it write it down 
And then look, the questions that will come to mind, right? You said it, you spin out, right? So look at the questions and you will see that those questions can't be answered definitively. They're designed to get you to ask another question and talk about overthinking. That's where it comes from. And it's the addictive part of the mind getting you to, oh, question, question by asking questions that can't be answered until you're like so stressed out. You're like, oh, fuck it, man. I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, and and so you've gotten nowhere, you know, yeah. so it's a ploy and people can be educated about these ploys. They can recognize them and don't have to fall prey. And then you can go through your life not feeling like you're being dragged around by your nose by some addictive behavior. And if you want to do something that alters your state, great. Good for you. You know, We all want to do it, you know, and yeah. do it, you know, in a reasonable kind of way. And it's and not feel like you're always susceptible to become having some, you know, compulsive behavior control you. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to be that. Yeah. Just a just a final point before we wrap up. You said it yeah. there, really, but having urges, like it's it's okay. It's okay to have yeah. the urge. It's what you do with the urge that matters. And I think a lot of people they think that having the urge is a problem. If they have an urge, they're definitely going to relapse. And so that's why they yeah. try to distract themselves. As we were saying at the start of the conversation, they try to yeah. distract themselves, and it doesn't work because they don't think having an urge is okay. When you realize yeah. having an urge is okay, that's yeah. when you can actually look at rewiring your brain through dealing with that yeah. healthy ways and i think too that you know to give people you know the benefit of the doubt for them to think you know that the urge is not something that is something that they can deal with it's because they've been giving given inadequate tools to deal with a compulsive desire and so it you know People need to take the class in order to learn the script, in order to realize, oh, I actually can, you know, feel okay about this and make changes. I remember my mentor a billion years ago, she had an ad in the paper um, and where she would, she was talking to smokers as a nicotine addiction. She, she advertised, stop smoking and feel good about it while you're doing it. And I thought, that's a bunch of bullshit <laughs> you know, really, because all the times I tried to stop smoking, I was just like miserable, just like hanging out like, oh my God, until I finally would just like fucking smoke. Right. But it's actually true. I mean, yeah, it's going to be challenging, but the script is so powerful that it, you know, you can feel good about it while you're doing it, you know, because you know, you got this powerful tool that's handling it. And then the urges are just not so scary anymore. But I understand why people would be afraid of the urges because when you try to take a addictive desire and, you know, feed it, you know, deep breathing, well, no wonder, you know, it's just not going to help. But it'll, deep breathing will help you if, with stress if you have stress in your life, you know, it's not yeah. going to help with addiction. So, yeah. And that's the other thing is that there's so many like vague, explanations for how you deal with urges like everyone's giving advice on how to deal with urges like oh yeah just yeah. do some mindful breathing or do this or do yeah, that but vague is it's the incredibly word. vague and so obviously okay. the addicted part of the mind is just going to like capitalize on the opportunity to get you to right? go have a relapse yeah so Rather yeah than just like get super specific on the addictive part of the mind i know exactly how it works and i can help people to deal with their own addictive minds so yeah Hopefully we'll be helping some other people and yeah. Yeah. So if you do want any further help from us, then just go to thomasmolyneux.com and you can check out our free training. So yeah, yeah, I really hope this podcast has helped you. Thanks again, Mary. We'll keep on going, keep on um, trying to get this message out there to people and we'll see what happens really. Yeah, it should be fun. All right. Thanks a lot for watching or listening. And I do hope you have an amazing rest of your day.